Yes, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that, unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the third letter of St. John. Beloved, you are faithful in all you do for the brothers and sisters, especially the strangers. They have testified to your love before the church. Please help them in a way worthy of God to continue their journey. For they have set out for the sake of the name and are accepting nothing from the pagans. Therefore, we ought to support such persons so that we may be co-workers in the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Bless the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His prosperity shall be mighty among upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He shall never be moved. The just one shall be in everlasting remembrance. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, while it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. What will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. My dear friends, today our Mass intention is for those whom I would speak of as the poor among us. And I do so because tomorrow, November the 15th, is our observance of the World Day of the Poor. And 
observance established four years ago by Pope Francis. And when I speak of the poor among us, I don't just mean some kind of abstract demographic of our population. I speak rather of the poor on our doorstep. For example, you may have an employee who doesn't make a lot of money, and so you must wonder how they struggle to make ends meet. Or think again of those people who pump your gas at the service station. Or think of that adult who packs your groceries at the food store. There are many working poor among us. People working but still having great difficulty struggling to make ends meet. And it is to the poor among us on our doorstep that we're invited to not only think and pray of today, but also to reach out to in a gesture of generosity and charity. Friends, our gospel today is a parable, and parables are very effective teaching devices. They utilize stories, and stories have characters, and characters do things and say things which we remember. And so parables are stories appeal to our imagination and our memory in the way a straightforward narrative expression does not. In our parable today, we have two characters, a widow who is quite persistent, and a judge who is described as dishonest, but rather, in fact, seems to be simply insensitive. The widow coming before him is persistent, and in her persistence, she finally gets him to render her the judgment which is just and which is due her. The moral of the story seems to be persistence pays off, but it's more than that. It's really a story about prayer, about persisting in prayer. For us people of faith, prayer is a part of our life. But in our culture, prayer seems to be more a matter of our vocabulary than really of our action. For example, a tragedy occurs, and you'll hear people say, well, our thoughts and prayers go out to the victims and their families. And you might be moved to ask, do you think they're really going to pray for those people? But prayer very much is to be a part of our life as people of faith. And there are two classic definitions of prayer. One is prayer is the lifting up of our hearts and minds to God. Another one is prayer is simply talking to God. And in that second tradition of prayer is talking to God, we can think of the famous Jesus prayer, which simply says, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. So Jesus prayer, talking to God. Or again, there's another prayer in that tradition, which I learned many, many years ago, and which I've never forgotten because it's so poignant and so meaningful, so real. It's a prayer of a Mire herdsman from West Africa. It says simply this, Lord, stay close to me and let me stay close. Of course, as we practice prayer, the art of prayer, we learn that prayer, as it is perfected in us, is not just vocal or spoken prayer, but rather it's the deep, silent prayer of our hearts. And this leads us into the practice of meditation and contemplation, which is very much a part of our Christian tradition, though, though to many of us it's totally foreign and unfamiliar. And we can be led into this practice of meditation and contemplation with the use of scriptures by that practice of prayer known as Lexio Divina. So we must pray. We must pray often, as St. Benedict says. We don't need to pray long, but you should pray often. I'm reminded, too, of a quote by a Benedictine priest who once was my rector, Father Hilary Hoffensmeyer, who says, until you are convinced that prayer is the best use of your time, you will not find time for prayer. So you must find time for prayer. We must all become like that persistent widow in our prayers. There's an expression that says, prayer changes things. And that's true. And one of the reasons why it's true is because our prayer changes us, first of all. Prayer helps to deepen our sense of faith. That same faith of which Jesus spoke in the Gospel when he says, when the Son of Man comes, will he 
find things faith on earth. This time again, he's speaking of the end of time, the end of our lifetime. And that's what's referred to by the day of the Son of Man, the end of time. Our task is not to worry about when it's going to be, but rather to be prepared for whenever it comes. And one way to do that is to deepen our faith by the practice of prayer. Praying like that, simple man, Lord, stay close to me and let me stay close to you. Friends, we're still in the month of November, the month of remembering, remembering our faith in the party. And whether, as I said, whether they died 20 years ago or 20 months ago, whether they died last week or just yesterday, we pray for them that they may enjoy the peace and comfort and fullness of the divine presence. We pray for them in these words. Lord, for those who believe in you, death is the end of poverty and the beginning of riches, the end of pain and the beginning of joy. The end of weakness and the beginning of strength. Do not let grief overwhelm us or loss embitter us, but out of our sadness let joy arise for so much given to us. Cast out our fears and do not let our hearts be troubled or afraid. In love and trust we commend to you all our departed loved ones whom you have called out of this mortal life. You love them always with great love. Now that they are freed from all the sorrows of this earth, admit them to your presence, where mourning and sadness are no more, but peace and joy in the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, with our hope of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Eternal rest, and I remember, Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon you. their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us now put our need before the Lord as we offer our prayers of petition. We pray this day for the church throughout the world that we may always remember that before the Lord we are all the poor and may always have in his heart a place for those who are the poor among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your our prayer. Let us pray for Francis, our Pope, that he may continue to lead us after the manner of Christ the Good Shepherd, with which we pray to the Lord. Lord, in your our prayer. Let us pray. That this day, when we enjoy a weekend without lockdown, may be a time when we continue to practice our safety protocols for the benefit of our own health and the health of our community. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our continued protection during this hurricane season. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us now in silence put before the Lord whatever need. God, hear our prayers, grant our needs, and keep us grateful and faithful to you always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands that has become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at their hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery, the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creation serve you, all the redeemed praise you, all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol with you all the angels and enjoy 
full celebration we are praying holy 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 god and god of hosts that have an earth god full of your glory hosanna in the highest bless this he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy unto the glorified god who loved the human race and who always walked with us on the journey of life blessed indeed is your son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery in your death, O Lord, and you profess your resurrection until you will come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing, look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the death and of the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Remember your church here among us. By the light of the gospel, strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, the whole order of bishops. That in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a, as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your house, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly dwelling place is gone, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And now we make our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself wholly to you now as I do when I actually receive you. Permit me never to be separated. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the outpouring, the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power coveting through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. The mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. My dear friends, may we have a wonderful day. Let us, uh, while enjoying this day, this Saturday, this weekend, without lockdown, let us remain faithful to our safety protocols, to the good of ourselves, our family, and our entire community. God bless you. One note. Our stream mass tomorrow comes from St. Jude's, the 33rd Sunday